Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a lunatic wearing a jetpack. Welcome to episode 23 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. Last week, I showed you a mod that added a lot of optical gadgets for people who were not wearing powered armor. And this week, I'm going to show you something similar by showing you a jetpack that doesn't need powered armor. This is the Cross Jetpack. And the basic version that you craft at the chemistry station is pretty much similar to the normal jetpack you get with a power armor suit. It does drain action points when you're using it, but it doesn't use fusion cores. However, with the basic version, you will take full fall damage because you are not in power armor. Animation during flight is fairly normal and you can actually jump, fly and aim and shoot. If you are a VATS user, you will have to wait until you land, until you can use it. That's pretty much the same as if you were jumping. Just jumping normally will not let you use VATS until you land. There is also a version of the jetpack called the Jet Sprinter that when you sprint, activates and allows you to run a little faster, reduces the action point costs of sprinting and allows you to jump much further. And there is an advanced version of the jetpack that comes with both functionalities enabled so you can get the jet sprint and the jetpack. The basic jetpack requires science rank 2 and armor rank 2 and you craft it at the chemistry station. To add the actual functionality you need to go along to the armorer's workbench and either select jet sprinter which requires rank 2 in armor and science jet pack which requires rank 3 in both of those or the advanced one that requires rank 4 and as you saw there is actually a version of each of those that has blue flames instead of orange you can also upgrade the jet pack to reduce the fall damage you take by either 30 percent or 60 percent if you would like and I will point out that this mod is perfectly compatible with things like the Cross Cybernetics mod by the same mod author. And I believe there is a modification in there that reduces the fall damage even more. So if you really want to do some very high flying with this jetpack, you might want to use the exoskeleton so that you don't fall to your horrible death. And like all of the other mods that this mod author has made, you can change the paint you can add chrome, and you can even change the color palette to be, well, basically whatever you want and make it suit whichever outfit you happen to be wearing. This mod feels really well done and it doesn't even feel particularly overpowered or unreasonable. It certainly isn't more powerful than power armor even though it doesn't use fusion cores. And honestly, if, if you like, the feel of the open skies on your face. Well, unless you're wearing a closed face helmet. Or you just don't like power armor, but you do like the idea of flying around and raining death from above down on your enemies. Give this mod a try. Warning, the video you are about to watch may contain graphic scenes of nerdity. That's right, the next mod I'm going to show you is for all those nerds out there. It's called Vertidrones, and it adds, well, remote control flyable vehicles that you can play around with inside the game. The mod gives you the option to build four different Vertidrones, a laser version, nuke version, plasma version, and scout version. You craft them at the chemistry station, along with a lot of other things, and once you want to deploy one, you simply go along to the aid section of your inventory and do exactly that. I will uh, deploy the scout drone first. It disappears. I then exit the pit boy and I now have a scout drone that will in a second take off, hopefully not crashing into me like a vertebrate, and start flying around me in a wide circle. <laughs> 
which is very very cool. Now you can't control them at the moment unfortunately. The mod author is trying to make it so that you can control the path. But you can ride along and see what the Vertidrone is seeing. If you go along to miscellaneous there will be a Vertidrone control program. You click on this and it will give you access to any of the drones you currently have circling you. I only have one. Drone one. Go along to this. You can either access, access its camera, recall it or even make it blow up. Although God knows why you would want to do that. I will access its camera. Once this is done I have to exit the pit boy and then I'm now looking at the camera from the vertibird. I can control the camera a little bit with the mouse as if it was third person but I have no control over the vertibird as far as I know. If I use my arrow keys from what I can see I actually move on the ground. Uh, so you don't actually get any control. He is going to try and fix that when F4SE gives better control over the scripting engine so you will just have to wait and see. But there you go. You can scan with night vision the entire wasteland. If you want to get out of it you just click the sneak key and you're out. You can actually deploy more than one drone as you probably guessed from the menu. I will deploy the laser drone and off it will fly. But the other one is still busy circling me. Whoa that's a little uh, close. And now I will do the plasma one. I'm going to hold on to the new one for a second. So there you go. There is my third drone. And if I run off after a few seconds they will actually follow me. And there you are. They have found me and are once again circling. I can actually take control of any of the three. I now have three drones. I can take control of any of them and if I select the drone it will actually tell me which one I have control over. For example this one is the laser one. The drones do engage enemies for you but beware the nuke drone when it attacks it does so fairly indiscriminately. There you go. You may lose one or two of your other drones as well. And once you're done with them you can recall them. It will take a few seconds for them to refind you but they will reappear in your inventory. If the mod author can actually get it so you can fly the Verti drones manually yourself, perhaps scout out an area or even initiate an attack from long distance this mod could become very very useful. But even if he can't the mod is also a hell of a lot of fun and sometimes well sometimes that's just enough. From small verti drones to big vertibirds this is my very own personal craftable vertibird. Yes ladies and gentlemen this is all mine. You build the vertibird in the settlement building menu and it's pretty much identical to how you would build any other object. It does come under special but you just place it and build it if you have enough components. As you can see I have already built one. Once you've built it you can actually move it around if you want. However this is not a stationary settlement object. It does behave exactly the same way other vertibirds do. Once you're in the vertibird you just open up your map, select your destination and off you go just as you would in a brotherhood vertibird. Once you get to your destination you disembark as you would normally but this time the vertibird will not leave you. It will power down and it will remain exactly where it landed. So you can travel to wherever you're going, do whatever you've got to do, come back and get back in the vertibird without having to use a signal grenade. There is one other difference between this and the standard vertibirds and that is that this vertibird is sworn to carry your burdens. That's right you can store a lot of things in this vertibird. I tested it out and managed to get about 1200 weight of items into the vertibird which is about three or four times more than a reasonably strong player character can. 
This is obviously a fairly big deal as it means you can leave the vertebrate part somewhere and then keep running backwards and forwards and dumping junk into it or nice. picking up new ammo. This is really useful if you're playing on survival mode because of course ammo has weight now. So you can actually have a kind of mobile supply base, land somewhere, leave some of the heavier ammo with it, go out adventuring, come back, deposit some junk, pick up some new ammo and supplies. One potential pitfall you should be aware of is something to do with the way the AI works. The first time you interact with the vertebrate, you climb in as normal, but you get a conversation prompt. I always tell him, him, it, we're going to get along just Even fine. I can't understand you, but I think we'll get along just fine. And then you will be presented with four dialogue options. These are the options you will normally be presented with when you climb in. Uh, you've got two for trade. That is what allows you to interact with the inventory and offload your stuff. And the other one I would recommend using is three. Actually, I'll be back later. Actually, I'll be back that later. terminates the conversation. So if you don't want to add anything to the inventory, just terminate the conversation and now pick your destination and fly away. The one you want to really avoid is number four, time to hit the road. You will basically be asking the vertebrate to come along as a companion, which might sound interesting, but is very problematic. Time First of all, if I do this, it gets rid of my current companion. I will leave her here. I now have a companion vertebrate. The problem on, with this is if I get out and start to run off in this direction, once I get a certain distance from the vertebrate, it will try to behave, oh, you saw it. It will try to behave like a companion and it will teleport towards me. And there you go. It will also fast travel when I fast travel. It's extremely strange and it can get very weird. Don't worry if you accidentally do this. Just go and find the companion you left behind and take them as a companion instead and it will stop the follower protocol. Apparently the reason this happens is the mod author used the Automatron follower AI for the vertebrate to give you the option to trade with the vertebrate. However, he has suggested that now the creation kit is out, he may be able to remove some of the other options, especially, you know, this one, which is dangerous, because all you really need is trade and no thank you. In actual fact, I think Actually, I would prefer to see an alternative way of interacting with the inventory. Perhaps you activate here to get in the vertebrate and fly, but perhaps there could be a hatch somewhere here that is activated directly so that you can trade. I'm not sure how difficult that would be, but that would be a nice little addition. Now, as if a personal vertebrate was not enough, the mod also gives you a few other things, including vertebrate air support, which is a vertebrate that's not really for you, but for the settlement. It will stay here and it will fly around this settlement, shooting anything that comes nearby. It is basically your very own settlement air defense system. There is something very cool about watching a vertebrate circle your own settlement and engage anything that would attack. There is also a landing pad that comes with the mod. You can place it and in theory the vertebrate is supposed to land there if it's landing at a settlement. I just didn't manage to get it working. You've got to find a very flat spot and it's recommended that you place it on top of floors. I did that. I've used wooden floors, concrete floors, and I just couldn't get it to land. Uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but that's just not quite working for me. Great idea though. And as an added little bonus under resources miscellaneous, the mod will also allow you to build either a broken Stingray Deluxe, a broken UFO, or a broken Vertebird. These are mostly ornamental, but they do actually function as resource scrapping benches. So you can assign settlers to them and they will get scrap. So if you want to have that type of settler assigned, but you want something a little more, well, interesting, you've now got that option. All round, this is a great mod. Very, very useful indeed, especially the fact that you can load all of your stuff 
onto the vertibird. That is going to be very useful for me. It's probably going to be useful for a lot of other people now that survival mode is, is around. And yeah, love this mod. And that is all we have time for this week. I hope the video was helpful and I hope you found it entertaining. Please leave a comment down below. Give me some feedback if you would like. I am going to end with some screenshots that you guys have been posting. As always, I, I want to thank you all for doing so. Your contributions are appreciated and you do a much better job than I ever could. If you are interested in submitting an image for me to use in one of these videos, I will leave a link down below to a video that will show you exactly how you can do that and let me thank you in advance for doing so. Next week I'm away on a business trip and I am unlikely to get the time to create a mod vault so I do apologize for that. It is probably going to be two weeks before the next episode. I do hope you can join me for that video or, you know, any of the other videos that I make and whichever video you decide to join me for, I look forward to seeing you there. But until then, remember, as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.